In this last episode, we will see how we can climb the last steps of our path to innovation and how we can summarize all of it in what I call the innovation triangle. In this last episode, we will see how we can summarize these eight steps to innovation within a single triangle, the innovation triangle. So if we want to summarize what we've seen already until now, we can see that we have the different steps of the problem. Question being, can I identify a real problem? And we saw that the second step we had to follow was to find what are the symptoms of this problem. And these symptoms generate, in the third steps, generate some impact to some users, some people, which is the fourth step. And of course, we must identify who are these users and they could be different type of populations. Then, when we narrow our study on one group of people, we will try to see how the impact of these symptoms create some pain and try to identify which pain, which in marketing it's called the mark the sorry, the customer pain, which type of pain is impacting these people. Now we must move to the next step. And the next step is to identify the solution that could actually help this group of people to get rid of the pain they are feeling. So what we must do here is actually to try to identify the cause of the symptoms. Because the problem itself, trying to fix the problem doesn't matter because the problem exists only because it has some symptoms that impact some people. So if we find the cause of these symptoms, we could maybe work on the solution to suppress this cause. And this is how we follow the next step of these X steps path to innovation and how we actually combine them in what I call the innovation triangle. Don't forget that people don't want innovation. They don't, except for a minority, they don't act, adopt a new system, a new product, because it's new. The only thing they want is something that will suppress the pain they feel because of some problem. And the pain can be a very minor thing. The reason why people are buying some cupcake and having cupcake or chocolate or candies it's not because they have a major pain, but actually having some candy help them to suppress some pain they feel. So people don't want innovation, they want pain cures, and our solution, our innovation, is actually, must be actually a pain cure. Step seven of our process now is what cause the symptom. We have listed a couple of symptoms that impact a specific population. It's important for now to know what are the cause of the symptoms, because if we find the cause, then we identify the problem. We quantify the problem. We know what are the roots of the problem. 
And to do that, we can we can adopt different methods. There are several methods that are used in marketing, in industry. Let's try this. This is a five wise method. It was developed by Toyota. It's very well used um, in industry, many domains. And Taishi Ono summarized these five wise methods by the, the quote, the basis of Toyota's scientific approach is to ask why five times whenever we find a problem. By repeating why five times, the nature of the problem as well as its solution becomes clear. And the five wise method has other methods, has one goal, not stopping at your first opinion, but try to explore and go deeper in being able to identify the roots, the actual roots of the problem. So let's take an example here. What I see as an ex uh, as a problem is I missed the exam. I missed my exam. So the question is why I missed the exam? And the answer, the first one is because I was late for the exam. And then we apply the five whys method and we ask the question about why. Why I was late for the exam? Because I woke up late. And why I woke up late? Because the alarm didn't work. My alarm didn't work. Why the alarm didn't work? Because I forgot to activate it. And why I forgot to activate it? Because it was not on my to-do list the night before the exam. So we can see that now we identify by going back to the root of the actual cause of me missing my exam is that the actual problem was activating my alarm was not on my to-do list. And the fact that I forgot to activate it was the cause of the symptoms and the symptoms being alarm not working. And the impact of my alarm not working was actually I missed my exam. And the pain I feel because I missed my exam here is I didn't get my credit. So the question here, if we want to address the problem of missing my exam, it's not that I must try not being late for the exam, but actually I just have to put on my to-do list before the exam that I must check that my alarm is activated. We can take another example like a CEO of a company who is wondering why all his employees get the flu. So why do all my employees get the flu? Because they get contaminated at work. And of course, there could be another reason. They could get contaminated somewhere. But actually, in this example, they get contaminated at work. Why? Because they are in presence of sick people. And why are they in presence of sick people? Because people who are sick keep coming, working at the company. And why? Then you can explore different routes to, uh, to find out what is the potential cause or if there are several causes. Why are they still coming, working, even when they're sick? Because they need the money. And why they need the money? Because they don't get money if they don't come. So you see that actually if people could get some support, financial support when they're sick and have to stay home. And we can do the same with people who get their kids being sick. Then actually they wouldn't come to the company and they would contaminate the other employees and there will, would be less employees being sick. Another 
Cruise could be that people keep coming even when they are sick because they cannot work from home. And why they cannot work from home? Because the company has no infrastructure for remote work. And if the company implements some infrastructure to allow for remote work, then we we identify the problem and we can work on the cause of the symptoms and solve the problem. Now it's time to work on creating the functions. And don't forget that functions are the collection of assets, an innovation process to suppress the cause of the symptom. So these functions must be developed not because we want to develop these or that function, but actually they have a specific goal, which is suppressing one or several specific cause of these symptoms. And step eight will be that we ignite values. We don't create values. Values is what people get when they use our innovation. We don't do that. We design function that kill the pain, that kill the customer pain. And because we suppress the pain by actually suppressing the impact of the symptoms, then we induce values in the customer mind. Now we can summarize everything within this triangle. We had the problem. The problem had symptoms. These symptoms had an impact on the users. And this impact causes some pain to the user. We have been working on finding the cause. And now when we develop the solution, the solution is actually a collection of functions. And these functions are created only to suppress the cause of the symptoms, then suppress the impact, then suppress the pain. And because we suppress the pain felt by the users, then we ignite the value. And our innovation triangle summarizes this full process where we are the innovation actually in this triangle, a solution developed to suppress the cause of a problem to ignite values in the mind of users because they don't feel the pain they had when they were exposed to this problem. Now, if we want to see where research will take place, remember that at the beginning, we said that usually, and especially in the academic world, we said that innovation is the outcome of research. We do research, we discover something, we invent something, and then what we call innovation, it's a path to commercialize or try to commercialize this invention, this discovery. Actually, we see usually, or what we, we think are, uh, usually, that we have to begin with the solution we created, the discoveries invention, and the outcome of will be to commercialize it. And this is what we call innovation. We saw at the beginning of these videos that innovation does not begin with a solution. Innovation begins with a problem. And that was the first step of our path to innovation. Now, as we are working on the solution and we know what the solution means, the solution is the collection of functions created to suppress the cause of the symptoms of a given problem. We have different options. First, maybe the functions we must develop exist already. They are commercial product, they are out of the shelf, and what we must find is that we identify the right function, 
the correct component and take it and assemble, integrate it. Or we don't have the correct component, the correct function. And we then we must create, we must develop some research to actually create this function or improve a function or adapt a function, the function that we have already. So the solution actually will be another triangle when we to identify the research, we will conduct some research, could be research and development, of course, and doing the integration of this function in order to deliver the solution which is well adapted to what we need. And what we need is actually not what we want. What we need is a product that will help the users to see their pain going away. And now we have the final conclusion of a process, which is the eight steps to innovation. You saw that we started with a problem and then all the past is actually asking questions. When you ask questions, that means you must ask people. It's not something you, you do by, your, by yourself or with your team. You must begin to ask yourself about the question. What are the symptoms of this problem? Then, what are the impacts of these symptoms? And of course, at that time, you must be able to go outside and ask people who, the users, the population, what is the impact of it? If what you believe is correct, and what is the pain they feel? When they are impacted by this problem, what is the pain they feel? Then. You try to figure out what are the cause of the symptoms that create this pain. And when you have identified correctly the cause, you can work on creating functions and assembling this function. This is where you must maybe do some research. Or maybe the only thing is a function exists already and your product, your solution will be the smart combination and integration of functions that exist already. You can think about the iPhone from Apple. Basically, Apple didn't create anything. The iPhone was based on the integration of functions that existed already. And when we create functions that can suppress the cause of the symptoms, then we will ignite values in the mind of users, and this is what we call our solution. We will see in a bonus video how we can actually use this to create a first draft of a business model that is based on these X steps to innovation. So see you in the bonus video for the conclusion of our story.